Howdy folks, I'm Hank Sheffer, and welcome to another true life adventure right here with Marshall Trimble on Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. All right, Larsena Pennington, uh, the, the, the ordeal, uh, the, the, the ordeal of or, uh, Larsena Pennington. Uh, let's start out with um, uh, the, um, uh, the Arizona situation in Arizona. Uh, in, in, in during the time the Penningtons were here, um, the Civil War, when the Civil War broke out, the Army abandoned all of the military posts here in Arizona, just took what they could and, and set them on fire. And um, so um, uh, th this, this was interpreted by the Apache. They knew there was something going on back east, something big going on back east, but they really interpreted it as now, now, now it's, our, it's our place again. And where uh, they didn't have the soldiers to worry about, they roamed. They roamed and, and looted and pillaged at will, and so it's pretty dangerous. In fact, the safest place to be was Tucson behind the walls, um, and people outside of Tucson either moved back to Sonora or California and just got out of here. It was it was it just really a no man's land for several years till the army came back, and. Um, so um, uh, the Penningtons, though, a little bit before that, um, e Eli Pennington was an interesting guy. He was, uh, he was from Tennessee and then to Louisiana and uh, Texas, and he moved to Texas about in the 1830s and um, settled in East Texas. But he was a wayfarer and wandering, he was a wandering soul, uh, and, um, and he uh, thought Texas was getting too crowded. So he decided to, uh, uh, and, and his family was growing, um, he now had 12 kids, <laughs> uh, eight girls, and four boys. And he decided to go out and check out the Brazos River country. So he goes out there and, um, uh, and he sees, sees you know, some good country around the Brazos. So he comes back to East Texas and um, his wife Julia has passed away. So now he's a single father and uh, he's got a huge family and he decides, let's get a fresh start in California. So they're going to go to California. So they load him up, um, uh, all 12 kids and him, and join a wagon train, and they head across Texas, uh, across New Mexico. They come into Arizona on the old Butterfield Overland Stagecoach Road. This is 1857. And they, um, uh, they, they cross it to Doubtful Canyon, come down through Apache Pass, Dragoon Springs, Benson, across the San, San Pedro River there. And, um, and then he, he turned south uh, for, and go over down to uh, Fort Buchanan, which is down on Sonoida Creek. And it's beautiful country. It's one of the prettiest range countries in Arizona. When they filmed the movie Oklahoma, they thought, this looks like Oklahoma. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it, it is just beautiful grass, good grass. And um, there was only one problem. Uh, uh, you ought to watch out for these roaming Apache bands because uh, they gave him cut no quarter. And, um, but he decides he wants to stay there. So they, he starts a ranch along uh, Sonoida Creek. And Larsen is his oldest daughter. And um, she's 20 now and uh, very pretty. And she's, um, all, the soldiers at, all the soldiers at the fort are just crazy about her. But she takes a liking to one guy, a fellow named John Page, big strapping, handsome guy, but he was, he, he was a hellion. And he'd come in with a notorious gunfighter uh, from Texas, uh, uh, Jeff Ake, in, uh, in 1857 also. And he's in Tucson. Well, uh, they fall in love and they get married uh, in uh, Christmas, on Christmas Eve of 1859, and um, uh, it's the, we believe it's the first American, uh, all American wedding uh, in the old Pueblo. And he takes a job working for Bill Kirkland, who is another pioneer Arizonan. And uh, Kirkland's got a uh, lumber mill and uh, a ranch down on Kanoa, uh, and that's just south of Tucson, a few miles on the way to on the way to Nogales, and. Um, He's, uh, he takes Larsena uh, uh, to, in, to tutor his, um, he has a, a ward child. This girl uh, is, a, is a, let's see, she's eight, eight years old, eight year old um, Mercedes Quiroz. And her mother is a widow and uh, Kirkland just uh, took a liking to the kid and he's gonna get her, he's gonna have her learn English. And so Larsena's down at Kanoa 
and doing that. And her, her husband John has gone up into the into the Santa Rita Mountains where they where Kirkland has a lumber camp. So anyway, she's not in good health, and she decides the mountain air up in the Santa Ritas will be more healthy for her. So she takes Mercedes and they load up in an ox cart, and they go up Madera Canyon. Uh, they don't know it, but they're being watched uh, by a, a band of just five Apache who have just wandered in from clear up north of the Gila River. These are Tonto Apache, and they're watching. And uh, they see them come in to the, they make a camp. They move into a tent, and um, the next morning, her husband's gone up to, to the pinery where they're cutting, cutting timber, and um, uh, the other man that came with him, uh, uh, his friend was Randall, and he's out hunting deer, and so she's just alone in the camp with the tent in the tent there with um, with little Mercedes. Well, she's got her dog. And she's curled up on a on a bed resting, and uh, Mercedes is outside playing, and all of a sudden the dog starts growling, and um, and uh, she hears Mercedes scream, and so she. Uh, reaches under the bed covers for a pistol, but about that time, the th camp, uh, the tent flap opens, and in, in comes this older uh, Apache, big fella, and um, uh, knocks the gun out of her hand, and uh, takes and and pulls her outside, and there she sees four other Apache, and they've got Mercedes, little Mercedes, and so while they're holding them down. Uh, they they just pillage the place. Uh, they 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 cut open bags of flour and scatter them on the ground. Just just regular trash. Just trash the camp. They're real young. She said they were just kids except for the for the one man, who was older, and um, we believe he is the uh, uh, was the uh, uh, chief of the Aravipa tribe up, up at uh, uh, Aravipa Canyon. A fellow by the name of Eskimensen, and is kind of a scoundrel anyway, but. Um, they um, uh, they 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 do the damage that they want to and take take the stuff they want and and um, uh, and they head out. They go up in a northeasterly direction uh, uh, out of out of a sand, uh, the uh, Madera Canyon, and uh, she's a uh, but she is a veteran frontier woman. Larcena is, and she's now 22, but she um, uh, she knows what to do. She starts tearing off pieces of her dress and leaving them along the trail. And breaking twigs, and they're so occupied with getting getting away, they not they don't uh, they don't even notice that she's leaving a trail for the follow, for for her husband to follow, and um, but off they go, and um, they um, uh, uh, meanwhile Randall comes back into the camp. He sees it's just been plain torn up, and so he rushes back down to Kanoa, and they get word down to Fort Buchanan uh, for the where the first United States dragoons are stationed. And uh, they send a party out. Um, uh, her husband is going to organize an, a rescue party to go after them, and so they're on. The, they're picking up the trail, and it, they they follow the trail. Well, they get way up on a high ridge, and along the way, uh, you know, they're, they 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 have a rear guard watching to see if they're being pursued, and they get up on the um, they get up on a high ridge, and. Um, uh, little Mercedes uh, hear him speak in Spanish. She spoke Spanish, and she hears him speaking that they're going to kill Larcena, and um, and so um, um, they get them up on they get up on the ridge. They make Larcena take off her dress, and uh, she's wearing just now a chemise and petticoat, and uh, then they demand they take her shoes, and. Um, and then they prod her up towards the edge of the canyon of the cliff, and they jab her with a with a spear, a lance, and uh, and and then they push her off, and she goes tumbling down the hill, and um, and they're throwing rocks at her at the same time, and uh, and so um, she lands at the bottom, and she hits a tree, and she's kind of dazed by it all. Then one of them comes up and takes a rock and smashes her head. Um, and um, uh, when when she comes to, uh, they're all gone, and then she hears the. But she's badly badly injured. She hears the search party come, and she hears her dog barking, and um, and the dog the dog knows she's down there, but it's almost twilight, 
and so her husband nobody can see and she is unable to speak because she's so badly beaten and so um, she can't help call for help and they then they see footprints shoe prints and um, these Apache had been wearing high 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 high, high rising uh, moccasins and so uh, see so the figure there's Larsena's tracks to follow her shoes the one of them was wearing her shoes and that's what throws them and so um, they go on and and she's she's now gone going to have to make it on her own somehow so but for about three days she just lies lie, lies there waiting to get recover uh, taking taking melted snow and whatever else she can find grass or whatever she can find on the ground to eat and um, she's battered pretty badly so she decides she's she she looks off to the distance there towards Madera Canyon she realizes it was she'd gone about 12 miles that's going to be her mark to go to, to work for she can't walk she's too badly beaten to walk so she has to crawl on her hands and knees uh, and that's the only way she can travel but she knows she keeps that uh, Huerfano in in view and she goes along and she's doing the best she can eating melted snow, uh, taking melted snow for water uh, whatever else what berries or whatever she could find along the way to eat and subsist on and finally she finds a place to bed down uh, and uh, she realizes she's in a bear's den <laughs> so she figures better get out of here so she crawls away she keeps crawling ever ever crawling towards um, a Huerfano Butte and um, she finally gets there uh, and uh, gets to the edge of the canyon, that the, uh, the ridge that looks down on the road to Madera Canyon. And uh, she sees an ox cart down there, and, but she can't yell. So she takes part of her clothes and waves them, makes a flag and waves, and they don't see her. So she's still got a ways to go. And um, it's been two weeks now. She's been out there two weeks. and. Um, so she crawls down and she gets down to the road and then crawls up to where the lumber camp was and um, there's nobody there and so she's but she does she does see the ruins of where you know what was left she finds some of the flour that they scattered on the ground when they cut open the flour sacks and and she um, she goes take, takes them over to the creek and she uh, soaks it and builds a little fire and she um, she's able to make a little bread make herself a little bread to eat and she has some water from the creek and and um, uh, the next morning she goes to sleep the next morning she uh, hears voices off in the distance and um, uh, it's the it's the lumber camp and so she crawls and crawls over there and when she gets there's a man named uh, uh, Hampton uh, is a black man from Texas and he's the cook and he hears a sound and he looks over there and he and at first he thinks it's an apparition. He thinks it's somebody who's come back from the dead. <laughs> He's really kind, of, kind of spooked about it, and uh, he um, he so so he but he he um, he gets closer, and she says, "I'm Larsena Pennington, or Larsena Page." She's now Larsena Page. She says, "I'm Larsena Page." So he picks her up, and uh, he carries her in. They didn't even recognize her. She had changed. She was so emaciated. And blistered, her shoulders had been bare and uh, uh, blistered from the sun, uh, and the nights were freezing cold, and the days were blazing hot while she was crawling, crawling all that way, must like to say about 12 miles, and um, and they took her, they took her into the camp, and um, they didn't think she was going to make it, but somebody rushes into um, um, uh, Kanoa and lets Kirkland know that uh, Mrs. Page has been found and alive. And, and her husband's out getting ready to go on another search. He would never gave up. The Apache grapevine said that she was dead, that she'd been killed. But um, he refused to believe it. And um, this is a great love story that you would think would go on and on, and, um, or would hope it would. And, but um, he, he comes back, and uh, they bring a doctor out, and the doctor thinks she's not going to make it. But he, he, he believes she can and he knows his wife and so uh, he puts her in a, uh, in a, in a wagon, uh, ox cart, and takes her to Tucson where she gets uh, medical, ca medical care and she uh, pretty soon she's back to normal again. 
well, what about little Mercedes? Well, the, the Apaches kept Mercedes for a while, and um, uh, the, um, uh, the, 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 the commander at uh, Fort, uh, Fort Buchanan now is, um, is, is determined to get her back and so he starts out, you know, they're, 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 they have connections with Indian tribes around there. Like uh, we, we want, kind of like if you remember from the searchers, uh, you, you know, there are people who give you information. And um, so Mercedes is believed to be up uh, around uh, Pinal, uh, Aravipa Canyon. And so, um, so uh, he starts negotiating with this Eskimensen. Eskimensen denies that uh, he was the person that, uh, uh, kidnapped her, but um, he maybe can make uh, a range to have little Mercedes ransomed, um, and it just happens that uh, the army has uh, has uh, 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 twenty captives from a battle o over in the Dragoon Mountains, uh, Pinal Apaches, and maybe maybe you can give us uh, one little girl for twenty captives, <laughs> and um, the major knew it was a uh, it was a it was a um, Major Steen, it was it was a uh, unequal trade, but he wants the girl to get the girl back, the little girl back. So, so uh, they they give him the captives back, they return the captives, and uh, they return the little girl, and uh, he uh, Kirkland gives him a horse to bring it, take her back to Tucson, and so she's returned to Tucson, and um, um, they ring the bells at Saint Augustine, and the whole town is celebrating uh, the return of this uh, little girl, and. Um, and so um, uh, she's back with her mother, and her mother's just uh, beside herself with, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, and, and fast forward now a few years, Mercedes grows up to be a beautiful young woman, and she marries a man named Charlie Scheibel. Charlie Scheibel is later sheriff of Pima County. And, um, and he, in fact, when Wyatt Earp and the O.K. Corral and all this, all this Cochise County war was going on. Charlie Scheibel was uh, was the sheriff uh, at that time. So, but anyway, this was um, uh, uh, unfortunately uh, while giving giving birth to her fourth child, little Mercedes, now 26 years old, passes away. That was in 1875. So, she did not live to see her husband become sheriff of Pima County, but. Um, Anyway, that was that was Mercedes' story, and um, Larsena. Things didn't go too too well for the Penningtons and, and the Pages. Um, uh, two years later, John Page is ambushed up by Canyon de Oro, and uh, he's ambushed and killed, and they buried him on the spot. She never got to see the body uh, or say goodbye, and so uh, now Larsena is a single woman again. And she had uh, she would soon give birth to a baby, uh, and um, she went back with her family. Uh, they were down on the Santa Santa Cruz River, and with her dad, and and um, they're moving about because of the Apache uh, is is still you know it's the eighteen early eighteen sixties, and the Apaches are the Apaches rule all up and down the Santa Cruz Valley, and so they're moving a lot, and he has to be away a lot, and when he's away, uh, it's up to the girls to. Um, Fight off, fight them off with guns. These girls, these you see these girls, four uh, four sisters uh, uh, taking them on. Well, then um, then another sister dies of um, of uh, the mountain fever or the malaria, and um, and then uh, two boys die uh, uh, in, in Apache attacks. Two of her brothers die in Apache attacks, and then her father uh, Eli is killed in an Apache attack. Um, and um, so now there are five, five of them have now uh, died either with malaria uh, or, or um, uh, Apache attacks. And um, so a brother from Texas comes out and he rounds up his sisters. <laughs> he, he's going to herd them all back mm -hmm. to Texas. He said, this place is too dangerous. And it was. My gosh, uh, it, it wasn't until the 1870s, well into the 1870s, that it was really safe. And um, so, um, but Larsena won't go. She's staying in Tucson. She's going to stay here now. This is this is where she wants to be. So she, um, two years later, she marries again. Um, has four children. She's now in her thirties, and um, she um, 
uh, has a pr productive life there in Tucson and um, lives until 1913. Died at, I believe it was 76. So she's an amazing, this amazing story of survival and an amazing story of a woman just with a, with a, will, to, with a will to live and what she overcame. But the other tragedy is what, all her family, you know, her, her dad um, and, uh, and her brothers and her sisters. Um, and so, but anyway, she, she's the remaining Pennington. But if you go to Tucson today, there's a big main street there called Pennington and it's named for the family. Thank you for watching this episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.